All right, you've been working on this awesome app of yours and it is finally time for you to make some money off of it. Now, you want to collect payments, but you don't really know exactly how. One thing that probably comes immediately to mind is, oh, we could just use Stripe. But the problem with using Stripe is, especially you want to sell to clients across multiple states, if you're in the US, or if you want to sell to folks in different countries, there's a lot of weird tax rules and it can be quite a bit of a headache. I remember just looking through tax laws in Texas versus what it is in California versus New York, and they were all different. Taking data from a client and then doing something with it, then it's taxable with a different rate than if you were to just be consulting or something like that. But you really have two options. You can either one, try to figure out what the tax implications are gonna be at every single location that where you have a person who may be like using your product, or number two, a little bit easier, is you can use something like Lemon Squeezy or Paddle. And these essentially allow you to say, hey, clients are gonna pay you, the money processor, and then you are gonna pay me. So technically the clients aren't paying you at all, so you don't have to deal with all those tax implications. And Lemon Squeezy, Paddle, whoever else does this, handles all of taxes, all for a fee percentage as of right now is 5%. For some folks, that might be a little steep, but if it saves you a headache of doing all these different applications, all this other paperwork and legal trouble, then why not? Again, I'm not a tax advisor, so definitely read through the documentation before you make any decisions. Now, how do you actually use Lemon Squeezy for this purpose? A lot of folks use it as basically like an alternative Gumroad where you can upload like digital products, you can do like templates, things like that, and then you can, or eBooks or whatever, and you put it on there. But they do have an API that lets you send data back. So we're gonna talk through how to do that. And this is gonna be focused on Bubble plus Lemon Squeezy integrating them. So step number one, create your product. So go to Lemon Squeezy, go to test mode down in the bottom so you don't accidentally charge your credit card anything, because that'd be bad. Step number two, you're gonna go and you can say, hey, I'm gonna make a subscription for $100 a month. You can do something else, but this is probably the use case for most SaaS tools anyway, so let's do that. All right, number two, after you created that, go ahead and save it and click the share button. When you click the share button, there should be an option to have a checkout link. Click on that link, uh, copy, copy it, and now you're gonna go to Bubble and you are gonna create a button wherever you want folks to click upgrade or to pay for your service, add it in there and put that link there. Now, what will happen is if you just deploy the app and you go in, you click that button, it should take you to this nice checkout window. And in this nice checkout window, they'll be able to enter in their credit card information and you'll have an execution. If you wanna test this out, the Stripe credit card payment, the fake credit card that you can use is 4242424, just repeat it. And then the, as long as the expire date is in the future and you can put anything for the CVC as long as three digits. So you do that and then you'll see that they had a successful payment process in Lemon Squeezy and voila, that's how you would collect the payment. You can stop there if you really wanted to, but that would probably would be a disservice to you and to the client because at that point, what was the point? Because you wanted them to pay you, but you should be unlocking things based on that. You could do it manually, by all means. You can, you can manually go in now to your app and you change a bunch of stuff. You can do that. Or if you're trying to make this like a um, automated like plug and play type of app, you probably want to take it one step further. And what you can do is you can set up a back end workflow on the bubble side, which basically just listens for webhooks. And so what all you have to do that is two things. Number one, you need to figure out what your API URL is. So to do that, you would go to settings on Bo. You go over to the API tab. There should be a checkbox that allows for API. And then you should see this little link down here that has a bunch of backslashes. It has like your app name and everything in there. So you would copy that and then you would go to Lemon Squeezy and you would go to settings, you go to webhooks, and then you create a new webhook. You copy and paste that link that you copy, that you grabbed earlier, you paste it in there. Uh, and then under events, you can say a subscription created. You can get really creative with this. You can use all the other ones, but for the purposes of explaining this, I used subscription created. And in that, what that will do now is every time that someone creates an order for a subscription 
to your app, it will now send a webhook to that address that has all of the like information that's like involved, right? I'll link the API like documentation below if you guys want to see more, but it will ha at least have like uh, the name of the person, their email, the product they bought, there's a subscription ID that's associated with them. Now on the bubble side, you would go and you create a backend workflow. Now if you're using a free plan of bubble, this will not work. You have to at least upgrade to the starter kit for it to actually work. So keep that in mind. So you would go to the workflows, add backend workflow, and then you would set it up to listen for elements on here. Now you can do the data elements two ways. You can do it manually if you've done this before, but if, since you're watching this video, you probably haven't. So what you can do is in the lemon squeezy, you can add backslash initialize. And then on a bubble, you can click detect data and it will pop up a window. It'll look like a little beacon, unless they change the UI, but it'll look like just like things that's like listening for almost like when you're doing like Bluetooth devices. And then you go back to lemon squeeze it and then you just pick the last test that you did and then you can rerun it so that it will force a message to come across. All right, once that happens, the beacon stops flashing. So, oh yeah, we detect the data and then you'll have a nice little pop-up. It says, here's all the fields that we found and this is what we're gonna map it to. You just hit okay, whatever. And then congratulations, your app knows how to read that data. But the true, what you want to do now is you make the workflow actually do something. You, and again, I don't know what's in your database, so I can't tell you, but at the most simple level, what I did was I said, hey, at the user level, let's set up the user to have a, a field or a data element that said, is called subscription type, right? And like when they first sign up, it's called like free right? Or like it will be null up to you. There's a field for subscription ID because that's something that will identify who they are. And then their email, right? So those are like the three things that I have in there. And then the workflow will say, what you can do is you can add a workflow and it'll say, if this, if the message that is sent back with the order order here has the email of anybody here, in this, that's in my database that has this email, then they match, right? So that, that's step one. And then it says, if they match, then change an element. And what you're gonna change is the subscription type. And I set the subscription type equal to wherever the name of the product is. You can do something else, but this is what I did. And then you can say subscription ID equals where the subscription ID that came across. You, you may have to troubleshoot this a little bit because like it's really sensitive to like spaces, like commas, slashes. But yeah, that's pretty much it. At that point, what you should now have is a workflow where someone can check out directly from your app. It will take you to Lemon Squeezy. They will be able to pay and then it will send the message back to your app and it will say, hey, this this person is a paying user. And then from there, you can put if statements inside of your app that says, hey, if this person has a subscription type of yada yada, they have visibility to this page. And if not, then send them to the page to say, please upgrade or something like that. But this is at the most simple level. Finally, if you want to take up one more notch, you can also set it up to cancel the subscription if you want. And in order to do that, all you have to do is send back a message in the API that says, hey, use take this user and uh, basically you base it off the subscription ID and cancel their subscription. So in the API documentation, there is a thing for delete. There is a thing for update or like this thing for cancel. So you basically use the cancel one to send that information back. And the way that you can do that is you can go to plugins under the plugins page and you can use the bubble plugin adapter that lets you make API calls and on that page, you just enter all this information. I'll put it up here on the screen that says, here's where I want to send it to. This is the information that I want to send. And I'll just copy and paste it down here. But this is like the JSON load that you essentially want to send back to Lemon Squeezing. And that will allow you to cancel that person's subscription. 
honestly, I think this is just like a little nice thing on top, but I've had, I've used so many services where you just have to call customer service to cancel your subscription. This will save you a lot of headache in terms of how to collect payments uh, in the future so you don't have to deal with all the tax stuff. But yeah, that's really it. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, put it down, down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a, give it a subscribe.